Hey guys, the first episode of our Best Team for Heart Gold and Cell Silver Remastered Let's Play is officially up in Mystic Zora, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications over there if you want to see some gameplay. Also got some fire content on our anime channel, Mystic Sage on the way, so be sure to go check that out as well. Links will be in the iCard and description below for both those channels. In any case though, hope you enjoy the video. So the Crown Tundra has been out for a week now, and that means we now know all the Pokemon that are available to us in Sword and Shield. As we knew from the beginning, we were never going to have the almost 900 Pokemon available to us at this time, but we did get a pretty large amount of them in the end. I thought that today, we should take some time to go over the Pokemon that didn't end up making it in the Sword and Shield, and are still stuck back in the 3DS in the 7th generation. This isn't including any of the mythical Pokemon that were left out of the games, though we've definitely got a couple starter Pokemon on this top 10. So sit back and relax as we indulge in what could have been with the top 10 Pokemon that should have been in Sword and Shield. Alright, let's open up the top 10 with a starter Pokemon, the beloved Typhlosion. We can only assume that if Typhlosion had made it in the Sword and Shield, it probably would have seen a nice increase to its move pull. I could definitely have seen Typhlosion getting its hands on a move like Scorching Sands, a move that would go really well with its base 109 special attack. It's honestly quite a shame we didn't get the Johto starters at all in Sword and Shield in the end, as it actually would have fit in pretty well in the region I feel. Typhlosion could have been one of the Pokemon lines walking around the Crown Tundra where there was no snow, and perhaps could have been a Pokemon that others hung around with to stay warm. Typhlosion is just a Pokemon that was greatly missed, and could have brought a little bit more flair to the region alongside the other fire types we already got. Next up, we've got Vivian from Kalos, and it not appearing in Sword and Shield makes some sense. I mean, just look at all the bugs flying around already in Sword and Shield, like Frostmoth, Butterfree, Vigavolt, and uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe there aren't that many bugs flying around the region, which makes me wonder why they couldn't just include Vivian as well. I mean, Kalos, as we all know, is based off of France, so it's worth that any of the Pokemon from X and Y were left out of Sword and Shield since it's based off of England. Well, regardless, Vivian and its 90 base special attack and 89 speed would have been a welcome Pokemon in the 8th generation, and could have benefited from quite a few moves that were fitting for it, like Life Dew, Misty Explosion, and of course when Dynamaxing, it could use Max Flutterby. Just in general, Vivian would have fit with the motif of the region, and could have been fun to use in battle. So this one might surprise you guys a little to see on the list, but honestly, I feel like it's a shame that we don't have Metacham here in Sword and Shield. It's a Pokemon that, while not super special in the stat department, definitely feels like it could belong in Sword and Shield. I can imagine Metacham being a lot like a knight you'd see defending a castle or something like that, and it possibly could have gotten a really interesting Galarian form had they chose to include it. Maybe one that turned into a steel dark type that was covered in a suit of armor in the same vein as Bisharp. Well, of course, that wasn't the reality. But that doesn't stop me from thinking about what could have been, had we in fact gotten Metacham back for the new generation. It would have had access to coaching, which I think is very fitting for Metacham, considering it looks like it could be a coach of some kind. All in all, with pure power and the moves it already has at its disposal, Metacham would have been cool to have in Sword and Shield. So here at number 7, we have a Pokemon I think thematically would have worked in Galar just as Weezing does. If you guys look into it, England is an incredibly polluted place, though most of that is air pollution, which might be why they went with including Weezing and giving a Galarian form over bringing in the Pokemon we're talking about, Muck. See, while the pollution is almost entirely related to the air, I don't see why that means we couldn't have Muck in the region too. You've gotta think a big pile of sludge like Muck probably has some fumes that radiate off of it as well, and thus would get into the air and make the smog of Galar even worse in certain places. Though I suppose it's possible that the thought of having so many Pokemon that can be blamed for pollution in a region based off of a polluted place might have been a bit dark. It would have worked with both the Cantonian and Alolan Muck making appearances, and it almost feels like Corrosive Gas is a move just made for Muck. The story is there for Muck, and it's special bulk to being Galar, and it's a real shame that it didn't make it. Alright, closing out the bottom half of the list is another starter, and it just so happens to be another one from Johto, the water type, Feraligatr. I decided to put Feraligatr so high up here because of how good it can be, though I will admit right away that perhaps thematically it doesn't make a lot of sense. Crocodiles definitely make the UK their home, but alligators 
are more of an American thing, so seeing Crocodile around Galar is definitely more understandable than a bunch of Feraligatr. Now even with that, Feraligatr is still a great Pokemon with nice stats, having 105 attack along with the hidden ability Sheer Force, which is of course one of the best abilities in Pokemon in my opinion. There's some fun moves I could see Feraligatr getting access to, and making good usage of like Flip Turn, and maybe even Lash Out. Really, I just wanted to put Frogator here due to it being a good Pokemon. So if you guys maybe feel it should have been lower on the list, I understand. Well, this one opening up the top five feels like it has everything working for it and against it for the inclusion in Sword and Shield. I'm talking about Ampharos, and it's a bit weird when you think about it that it was left out. Wulu was introduced, making it very clear that this region is respecting the shepherding roots of the United Kingdom, but why have just one shaped Pokemon and not the other one? Sure, you might be asking yourselves, if you want Ampharos, why not Go Goat too? Yeah, well, folks, Go Goat, as you might guess, is a goat, and thus isn't as synonymous with the United Kingdom. So, you know, how about go get it out of here with that argument? That was an awful joke and I'm sorry for it. But anyway, you guys know Alec Ampharos a lot, as it is a mainstay on my Johto best teams. I think it would have added a different current of electricity in Galar, which would have been super interesting. There's a move like Rising Voltage, which it would have definitely used to great effectiveness, and it's truly sad that we didn't get it. Alright, this next one is going to be a short entry. I think they should have brought Slacking back, but it's just because it would have been absolutely unstoppable in doubles with Galarian Weezing thanks to its neutralizing gas ability. Its 160 base attack wouldn't have been held back by Truant, and with 150 base HP, it would probably have HP through the roof if Dynamaxed. There isn't a lot to talk about aside from that, but Slacking would be damn near unstoppable with Galarian Weezing, and thus I feel it's a bit disappointing it's not in Sword and Shield. Alright, so let's talk about Staraptor. Now, I don't know what went into Game Freak's decision making when they chose what birds would appear in Galar, but I felt it's a real shame we didn't see Staraptor reappear for the 8th gen. Now, of course, it is possible they left it out alongside some other popular early gen 4 Pokemon, like the Starters and Beebrill, because they're planning for those remakes to come out sometime soon. However, even then, I wish that Staraptor had made its way over. It's a very strong Pokemon with 120 base attack and 100 speed, and that awesome move pull which includes Brave Bird and Close Combat. It could have seen some more moves added in too with this new generation. Moves like Dual Wing Beat and Coaching would have been great ones for Staraptor to get access to as well. It just kills me because while Corviknight is a great flying type in its own right, I thought Staraptor should have been the alternative for an early bird Pokemon, because it's even better than it. Like I said, I understand why Staraptor might not fit in the region, but it's such a good Pokemon that it would have been nicer to see than in Pheasant. Alright, now in the penultimate spot, we've got, well, we just sort of touched on why it probably isn't here, but I chose Infernape. You guys know how much I love Infernape, as it is the best starter available in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, and quite frankly, it's one of the best starter options, period. It has the hidden ability Iron Fist, and in a generation where TRs and TMs are very good and easy to get, building a moveset with punching moves for Infernape would not be very hard at all. I can only assume that if Grookey and its evolution line can exist in Galar, and other Pokemon like Oranguru and Passimian as well, then an ape like Infernape can fit right in as well. Though, as I said before, I think that a lot of these popular Sinnoh Pokemon were left out because of the eventual remakes, so I don't hold it against them that much. That being said, however, I still wish it had been in the games so we could have enjoyed it. I don't care much about the other two starters though, so if they told me I could get Infernape, but in exchange, not the other two, it would be fine by me. But, I guess Empoleon is... It's still pretty cool. Torterra's fine. Turtwig's fine. Grottle's a no-no. Does that make things at least a little bit better? Alright, so this final one should be pretty obvious. Now, I understand that Cinderace got the Libero ability, and it is fast and strong in its own right, but guys, how can we have no Greninja? It's definitely missed in the 8th generation with its incredible protein ability, and of course, its battle bond form. Now, as I said, I get the fact that Cinderace has a very similar stat lineup to Greninja and a carbon copy ability, so it sort of begs the question as to why we'd have Greninja around. But regardless of that, why not have options? Greninja gets access to different moves, and honestly, I think I'd rather have the opportunity to turn into a water type while Cinderace can't. Though, on the other hand, Cinderace has a decent enough move pull where it can turn in the typings that Greninja can't. The point is that the two of these Pokemon being available together in the same game would have led to a lot of options. And honestly, seeing teams running them both 
would have been wild. Hopefully one day, we'll be able to see Cinderace and Greninja stand tall with one another in battle. Alright guys, that'll do it for this top 10. I want to hear from you though. What Pokemon did you guys want to see in Sword and Shield that didn't make the cut? Do you guys believe that we've truly seen the end of Pokemon being added in? Let me know down below and let's get some discussions going. I'll be sure to check them out. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream all sorts of games from Pokemon to Fire Emblem to Zelda and much more. I also have an anime channel called Mystic Sage where I do anime reviews, rankings, and countdowns. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to support me even further and gain cool perks, check out my Patreon. These lovely people have all given me their support over there and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.